An Otago-led research team has made a breakthrough in genome sequencing, revealing data about a young man entombed 2,500 years ago. The group was co-led by Professor Lisa Matisso-Smith of the University of Otago's Anatomy Department. She joins us now to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening. How is this study unique? Well, this is the first ancient DNA study of, of any Phoenician remains. So uh, this was a, an incredibly important culture in, in the Mediterranean region and possibly beyond. And, and so this is our first opportunity to look at the DNA of the Phoenicians themselves. Mm. Why did you pick this man? We picked this man, one, because the samples were available. I'd been working with my colleagues in Lebanon, who are based, based there, um, on general population history of the region. Um, and they knew that I worked on ancient DNA, so we started talking about an ancient DNA project. And um, we had the opportunity of sampling uh, uh, the remains of this man who was being brought from Tunisia to Lebanon, to the homeland of the Phoenicians. And my colleague was able to obtain a bit of, of bone sample for us to study. Mm. What were your findings? Well, we were really quite surprised. Um, given the history, the sample was discovered in, in Carthage. Um, and that city was supposedly founded from, from Lebanon, some rep refugees coming from Lebanon. Um, and so we expected to either find a North African, Tunisian, uh, maternal lineage. We're looking just strictly at the maternal lineage at this point, um, or a Near Eastern lineage. And what we found was actually a European lineage. And this is indeed the first, um, the earliest evidence of a European maternal or mitochondrial DNA lineage in North Africa. Why is that significant? <laughs> well, it tells us something, what, not only about the history of Phoenicians, but, but it helps us really understand and try to reconstruct the movement of people mm. um, around that part of the world generally. So we're finding uh, kind of more and more uh, evidence of, of population mobility um, early on and re population replacements. So this is where ancient DNA really helps us understand the patterns that we see today and perhaps how they, how they came to, to be the way that mm. they are. Mm. Where was this man's tomb discovered? Uh, interestingly, it was the gardener at the Carthage National Museum who was extending his garden plots and he wow. found a, a shaft which led to a tomb mm -hmm. and the remains were found in, in a sarcophagus in the tomb and so they identified the remains as belonging to a young man. Mm -hmm. um, this was in 1994 uh, and um, as I say, in, in 2014 the, the, the kind of exhibit was taken um, back to Lebanon to display there and, mm -hmm. and including some of his remains which we were able to sample. Do we have any idea what his age was? How, how when, when you say he when was a he young dated. man? When he dated. He was yes, a young man yeah. between the ages of 19 and 24. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And we don't have any idea of knowing what, what caused his death? There's no evidence um, in the skeletal remains that tell mm. us about the cause of his death. He, he appeared to be relatively healthy mm. and was buried with a range of burial goods. So he was clearly somebody who, who was a person of substance and, and recognized by um, the community. Mm. Are you carrying on with the study? We are. We're mm. continuing to work with colleagues um, both in Lebanon and around um, Italy and Spain, other, other locations where we have Phoenician settlements. So we're, we're working away with more samples right now and, and hopefully uh, we'll not only undertake further studies of this sample but, but um, many other so, uh, Phoenician remains so we can really try to understand the extent and the impact of the Phoenician mm. um, trade and, and exchange and, and not so much empire, but, but yeah. influence. That's fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. Professor Lisa Matisso-Smith from the University of Otago's Anatomy Department, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.